Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at proportion, uh, both direct and inverse, but uh, using the unitary method. So what does unitary method actually mean? It just, fi uh, just means finding the value of 1. Okay, so we've got some nice easy examples here to get us started. And you can expect to see these in both foundation and higher. So I have five cakes that cost £1.50 and I want to know how much do seven cakes cost. So the best way to start off with this is to go, okay, well I've got five cakes and that has the value of £1.50. Okay, and I need to get to uh, seven cakes. So the best thing to do is to find out the value of one cake. So this is the unitary idea, to find out the value of one. And once you know the value of one, you can find out the value of anything. So how do I go from five to one? Well, if you divide it by itself, so divide by five, five divided by five, you get one. Now, as long as you do the same thing this side, it's absolutely fine. So £1.50 divided by 5, and you should have that to be uh, 30p. Okay, so one cake costs 30p. And then you can then go back to the question, and actually we care about working out what seven cakes is actually worth. So how do you go from 1 to 7? You guessed it, we times by 7. And obviously we need to times the set by 7 on the right-hand side as well and that comes out at £2.10. pence. Make sure if you're dealing with money, like I've done here, you do do it to two decimal places, otherwise you will lose marks when dealing with money. Okay, so nice and simple example there. Slightly trickier one here, but not too bad. I've got three pens cost £1.26, so we set it up in exactly the same way. Three pens. £1.26, exactly the same concept. Find out how much one pen is worth. Always divide it by itself. So three divided by three gets me one. Same thing here, divide by three. Now if you're struggling obviously to do £1.26 divided by three and it's a non-calculator, don't forget you've got the old bus stop. So I'm dividing by three. £1.26 goes underneath. How many threes go into one? That's none. Don't get the decimal point. What's left over though? Well, I had one, so one's left over. How many threes go into 12? Four. How many threes go into six, two? So you can just do a quick little bus stop if it's a non-calculator. Uh, so we have 42p is the cost of one pen. And we want to know the cost of 10 pens. So to go from one to 10, we times by 10. And obviously, do the same thing on this side. So 42p times 10, just move the old decimal place. So £4.20, don't forget to put that second decimal place. Okay, so that's all the unitary method is, just find out the value of one, and they're two nice easy examples. Uh, there is just a few more things to talk about though, so just bear with me while I swap my paper over. We'll just have a look at the idea of direct proportion, whereas one thing increases, the other thing increases by the same amount each time. This is an example of uh, inverse proportion. Okay, so this is something that you'll have to read the question and sort of use a little bit of common sense to judge whether or not you need to do what we're now about to do. So three painters take five days to paint a house. That's our first step. Okay, so three painters take five days to paint a house. How many days would it take five painters to paint the same house? So this is where people would go, oh, I need to find out what one painter can do, which is absolutely fine. And that's exactly the same. We need to divide by three. So we need to find out how much one painter can do. But this is where it's slightly different. If three painters take five days to paint a house, it's actually going to take one painter longer to paint the house if he's on his own. So it's one of those sort of common sense things. Three guys can do it in five days. One guy is going to take a lot longer. But if we're doing with proportion, we can actually work it out. So if I divide this by three, I do the opposite over here, and I times by three, which gives me 15 days. So one painter will take three times as long 
so 15 days. So hopefully that makes a little bit of common sense. So it's that idea of inverse proportion. As one thing decreases, the other thing increases. And we want to know how long it would take five painters. So here we go, five painters to do the job. How do you go from one to five? I times by five. Again, inverse, so if I times by five here, do the opposite and divide by five here, 15 divided by five is three days. Okay, so it's just a quick example of inverse. As one thing decreases, the other increases, increases, decreases. And again, a little bit of common sense as to the question. So make sure you read the question a few times to make sure you get your head around what's going on. And one last thing to have a quick chat about which is recipes. So recipes tend to be easy. Uh, so if we have a look at this one, the recipe below makes eight cakes. Uh, how much would I need to make 12 cakes? So if this one here makes eight cakes, so 300 grams, I'm just gonna copy the amounts as opposed to the whole thing. Four tablespoons, 50 grams, and six eggs. Okay, so if there's eight Let's draw a mini table, that might make it a bit easier to see what's going on. So eight cakes, that's what I need. And I need to get to 12 cakes. Well, what's left, I need to work out what four cakes is. So I'm not gonna work out what one is, because it's not quite nice, and most people are happy with this. So if eight cakes is this, I need half the amount to get to four. So that's 150 grams, and half that, so that's two tablespoons. Half that, so that's 25 grams of butter, and half that, so that's three eggs. And once you've got that, eight add four is 12, so you can add them together to get 450 grams, six tablespoons of syrup, 75 grams of butter, and then nine eggs. No idea what that makes. I'm not even sure it's edible, but... It's just the idea, okay? So that's what normally happens, which isn't uh, an issue. You don't need to worry about finding what one is. However, you might have something a bit like this where it does come in handy. So again, this is for four people. So four people. And I have 400 grams of chopped lamb, just to make a curry this time. 200 grams of potato and two teaspoons of curry powder. And I wanna know what it is for five people. Okay, so it doesn't quite fit nicely, just like this one, you couldn't just half it to find it or divide it by four, like this. So in this case, unitary method does help us. So if we find out how much it is for one person by dividing by four, we can then work out what it is for five people by times it by five. So it's just an example of using the unitary method. So divide all these by four, I'm gonna have 100 grams, uh, 50 grams, and then 0 0.5 or half a teaspoon of curry powder, times them all by five to work it out for five people, 500 grams, 250 grams of the potato, and then 2.5 or two and a half uh, tablespoons of curry powder. So it's just how that might come in handy using the unitary method for um, recipes. Okay, hopefully that helps guys. Thanks for watching.